Hello lovelies, it's Shani Haynes here and welcome to my first online class. Woo! And this one is going to be about the embossing paste. So I have got the six projects that we will be making today and um, I'll go through them step by step with you over the next few videos. Your card won't have 20 on it, that was for my son Angus. <laughs> and we'll be making these beautiful cards and then I'll show you some other cards that I have made whilst playing with this lovely medium. I'll show you how to, how to make the stencils and this special card I have made an extra one for everybody who has bought my kit as a thank you it'll be in your in your box of goodies and I will show you how I got the, the gold um, finish on that one a bit later okay so first of all I want to sh show you um, what you'll need to do today's class you'll need one of the um, embossing tools to a spatula to um, scrape and um, move around your product um, so embossing paste now this is shimmery white and this is in just just white so they're both fantastic comes with a little cover on it you can keep that or not it's quite puffy and soft and the shimmery one which you can't really see probably um, I've nearly used all up because Evelyn and I have been very busy creating this week. You'll also need your masks. So this is what everyone will get in their kit. Diamonds, bricks, clouds and a medallion. You will also find in your kit three little sample sizes of some re-inkers. Now I've sent everyone Pool Party, Pacific Point and melon man, melon, melon mambo, okay? But you can use whatever colors you happen to have if you have them. Some washi tape, just some old yucky one you don't like. Bone folder, snips, I find tweezers invaluable. And glue, double-sided tape or tear and tape. I found a little cotton tip easy to use, maybe a paddle pop stick, I don't know where mine is, it's off somewhere, dimensionals, um, normal size and minis, or just cut the little ones, cut little shapes out of your normal size ones, a heat gun, not necessary, but it will speed up your day if you want to, it also puffs up the result, really lovely, uh, some dazzling diamonds or glitter, and everyone will be getting some of that from my kit. And if you want to do other things in your activities, um, embossing powder, not necessarily gold, I think I've got white that I used, embossing powder, if you want to do exactly what I've done and don't have the kit, um, Versamark white embossing powder, embossing buddy, it's your best friend, don't go home without him, don't leave home without him. And at the moment you actually can't leave home, that was a funny joke wasn't it, no. Okay, you also need... Well, um, if you have them or can get them, wet ones or tissues or paper towels, I know they're quite special right now, hard to get. Otherwise an old towel's fine. I have an old towel um, next to my big bowl of warm soapy water. The detergent is just mild dishwashing liquid detergent. So you can wash your masks as quick as you can after um, using them so the embossing paste comes off because it does dry pretty fast. Okay. So one thing I did forget to mention is you will want a waterproof sheet on your work surface. This one, um, I found in that I've, I love this stuff, I can't remember what it's called. It was a big piece, I cut it in half so it fits nice on my workspace. If you don't have one of these sheets, you can use a um, plastic folder, which is just designed to hold your A4 paper. And everyone in the everyone who receives my kit will get this in case they can't access anything else. And just to quickly show you um, 
where all these products come from. It's page 181 and there's the embossing paste, shimmery white and white, the Passion Party decorative masks, you get four in the, in the set. There's the stamp and glitter, which is the dazzling diamonds. That's this one. And uh, your palette knives, you get a set of three. Everyone in my class will be getting one of those. So yours might be a different shape to what I'm using today, but they all work great. There's the embossing buddy. Um, there's your embossing powder, all the different colors. And over here, there's Versamark, which and, and a refill, <clears throat> which you can access, which I actually use a lot. So there, that's just for um, interest if anyone wanted to know about where I got everything. You just need your A4 sheet, whisper white, or whatever card base you want to make it from, your trimmer, and for those who aren't familiar with this, you can buy these in bulk packs. They're beautiful, um, beautiful hard pressed paper, thick and thin in Whisper White. And all you do is, and they stamp beautifully, um, you cut your A4 in half, which is just a few centimeters. It's like, it looks like 14 centimeters. If you're an inch girl like me at the moment, it's five and seven eighths of an inch. So, and I mark it. Now this has two, um, two doobies. That's the pale, the lighter gray one is your scorer. So that's not gonna cut. So you need to use your blade, simple as that. And you've cut your paper in half. Now, I don't know if you can see I've marked mine with a permanent texture so I know where it's going to be cut every time. So that's the blues where I cut it and the pink is where I score it. So now you've got two card bases, you want to score them and you can score it at four and two sixteenths or four and one eighth or about ten and a half centimeters. I'm sorry, that was five and yeah, five and seven eighths. That was right for this. One. So this time, move the cutting blade out of the way and use your scorer. Okay. Now a little trick I'll show you. If you cut hundreds of card bases like I do a week, a quicker way of what I just showed you is to score your card first. So at four and one eighths or ten and a half centimetres with the scorer. Score the whole uncut piece of A4 Whisper White or whatever card base you're using, then cut it in half. So you only score once and only cut once. And that is a time saver. So then you now have two pieces cut and scored and ready to go. Okay, now that's the thick Whisper White. It's a great card base and I do most of my cards with the thick because it's sturdier and I seem to finish with a lot of embellishments. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so let's get on to the main thing we're doing here. This is a very simple, fun card. I'm running out of shimmery. <laughs> let's just use the normal white. <clears throat> Excuse me, froggy throat. So, oh. So you do need to actually put a mask down. That will help. And some washi tape. Now once you've peeled your two, your two strips of washi, that will pretty much do all six cards today if you don't get yucky on it, if it stays clean. Uh, it's, it lasts quite a while. I don't stick it onto the actual card. I stick it only on around the card. And you can go as thick or thin as you like with your with your paste. Obviously, the thicker you get, thicker you go, the more um, raised impression you're going to finish effect you have at the end. 
if you want a nice perfect finish you can scrape it all off clean like so and you can even put that back into your pot I actually like mine a little chunky so I'm going to just sort of randomly go over so I've got thick and thin parts all over it for a bit more texture okay if you do have extra bits you can scrape it back into your pot whoopsie and don't flick it around the room like I have just done okay so the lid goes back on always put your lid back on when you've finished a project because it will embossing paste will dry out very quick and always wipe your tool down immediately as well as your work surface that's rule number one if you leave it it will dry and set hard saying that don't panic it will soak off most of the time this is when your tweezers come in handy and there you have it now he goes straight into the soapy water and he soaks while I do my other things here give the little bits a wipe down wipe down your, your work surface you'll get a bit of mileage out of your wet one if you use him wisely okay so now we've got a wet embossed piece of paper you can let it dry naturally or you can heat gun heat tool in and this will actually raise the thick parts of the embossing paste it will actually puff up I don't know if you'll see it happening here or not While this is um, settling down and drying, you'll know when it's dry when uh, the back is doesn't feel damp and, and, and it feels nice and sort of, well, you know it's dry when it feels dry. Anyway, so the to get the little embossed happy birthday at the bottom of this crumb cake card base, I've used Label Me Bold stamp set and I'm sure most of you know how to emboss. You need some Versamark, white, uh, white embossing powder. I'll get that open and ready to go. And a embossing buddy. Here it is. Okay. So. Just make sure there's no grease and oil and finger marks there. Pick up some nice ink. Find your halfway point. Watch the magic happen. Okay, so you've got your powder on it, and then you set it with the heat gun. Wasn't too hard. Oh, now it's a little bumpy. I'll let them cool down. So once you're happy that this is dry, <clears throat> excuse, me. you want to cut this into one and a half inch squares so one and a half inch is or you could say roughly four centimeters or just under four centimeters and it is a little bit of a bumpy ride because it is chunky it's a bit of a chunky monkey and in fact I might even cut it upside down so the cutter glides nicely So now we've got six pieces, <clears throat> excuse me, six pieces. You can arrange the arrange these any way you like. You could just do three. You could 
you can do whatever you want you can move it around my design was with the six squares like so and they will just all glue down which I don't think you want to sit and watch me glue them but that's how that's how I did it that's with the shimmery don't know if you can see and this one's with, with the plain white so that's the card number one now you can pause, push pause and create this card and then when you're ready to watch card number two tutorial um, start again Just push play and I'll, and I'll see you soon okay bye welcome back this is card number two it's a little cute piggy she believes she could so she did now this is, um, I used the plain embossing paste for this, but you've got your special shimmery white that you can use. You can also have extra glitter like you can see on here um, using the Dazzling Diamonds sample that I sent you or any other glitter that you can get your hands on. Whoopsie. I've used this little piggy stamp set. Uh, I stamped. I've stamped everything in basic grey. That's my new black. Love it. Love it. Love it. And um, I have used for the card. I've already shown you how I make my card bases and the measurements. Most of the layer one on my cards today are five and a half by three and three quarters of an inch or 14 by 9.5 centimeters so I won't keep telling you that I think that's just what as you will soon learn that's what it is and if I do a second layer on top it's only a few inches or centimeters in again so <clears throat> excuse me I've um, yeah that's what I've done okay so to start off with we need to make our clouds and cloud mask which is adorable you can reuse your washi tape that will suffice now like I said earlier because my embossing paste shimmery white is in um, low stock I'm just going to use normal embossing paste and demonstrate how simple it is to actually just add a bit of bling to it at the end now clouds to me are all fluffy different shapes and colors different thicknesses some are more opaque than others so I'm trying to mimic that feel on this oops so I'll fix different thicknesses and textures and bits always remember to clean your tool people and put the lid on your bossing paste don't go answer the phone make a cup of tea and come back and two hours later and realize you've left the lid off because you'll be sad um, you can reconstitute it I've had one pot dry out and I think it's because I left it too long left it for about a year didn't touch it so use it up girls and boys and there we have these gorgeous clouds straight into your washing bowl and it's if you plan your cards in a way when you make them if you're going to emboss them all at once use up all, every oh, it's everywhere use up every um mask that you have in whatever order you want to and then you've got all four masks used all in the wash then you can just wash them all at once dry them all at once and get back on with your work now while that's still wet get your dazzling diamonds now your dazzling diamonds if you've got my kit will be in a little pot so i advise you then just to do it on some paper and once you've finished you can actually scoop your oh, 
I'll show you in a minute, to um, save, your, save your glitter so you can use what's not been needed on your work. So as you can see, this is sticking quite lovely. And it just gives that extra bit of sparkle. Okay, so if you just had, if you didn't have this container and you're just doing it straight onto your paper, then you just scoop your paper up, pour it, pour it back into your pot, so to speak. Okay. I always put the lid on my containers because when I turn on my heat gun, whoopsie, we don't want any dust fibers, whatever, blowing around the house. <laughs> so I don't lose my embossing paste or my powder or diamonds. And you may or may not see it puffing up as it heats. As, there we go. It's pretty cool, huh? Okay, so I'm just going to keep drying this off. I'll let you keep doing what you're doing and I'll get back to you. Okay, so welcome back. I have now dried off my um, clouds, but if you're waiting for yours to dry, then there's other things you can get on with. I've stamped and cut out my flying pig, and I've also cut out the little sentiments and stuck dimensionals behind them ready to go. So colour your piggy in whatever um, colours and with whatever tools you choose to use. I'm using a stamp and blend alcohol based marker which is amazing and I'm using ivory and I'm just quickly going around Okay, now before we do anything else, <clears throat> we've got to put some um, a little bit of glitter onto the wings. Now this is when your cotton tip is going to come in handy. Touch of glue, let's see if there's anything left in here, oh yes, lucky day. Okay, so I've got a little bit of glue in there and I'm going to use my cotton tip. You could use your finger to smear the glue around. Put your glitter on. There you go. So now on the back, we will pop a few dimensionals. and she's ready to go. Now, with your card, we've got some twine, baker's twine, and you need a couple of pieces of double-sided tape to fasten it onto your card. And there you have it. Your 
cute piggy card. Okay, so if you want to pause now and go and create that card, and I'll meet you back here for card number three. So this is card number two, the piggy card. Oh, I beg your pardon, and then there's something special to write in the middle. There's a, a little stamp which I completely forgot about. Okay, see you back here for card number three. Hello, card number three here. Um, this uh, is a really pretty one. This is from the Poppies collection. And this stamp that I used, wishing you very every happiness this special day will bring from peaceful moments. So the papers from Peaceful Poppies, I think. And it's amazing, it's bright, it's gorgeous, it's everything. Now your kit, half of you get this red paper, half of you will get the purple. Okay, DSP, Designer Series Paper. So I thought I'd do it on a purple one and show you both ways. All right, so we've got two masks in the wash soaking. Me, we'll do the diamonds, okay. Now we just need to really focus on this side. So you could just do a banana shape if you want to, or half, you can do it any way you like. I like it on an angle, tape him down. I don't get washi tape on my card. It tends to peel it off sometimes, peel off layers of the actual card. So be careful with that. Here's your shimmery white. Scoop some out and go around and that's basically all you're doing okay clean off your tool now you can do these cards two ways this kit um, the first way just emboss everything watch the whole video of course or videos and emboss everything, clean up, let everything dry naturally, and then come back and then make all your and then put your cards together. Or you can do it one at a time and take your time and do it over a couple of hours. This this class is really designed to be about a two hour class, but given the nature to it. You can take as long as you want. You can do it over a couple of days. It doesn't matter. So once again, I'm drying it because I love that full 3D effect of the paste. As you can see, you may be able to see it bubbling up. You may not, but I just love watching it. it looks awesome. Whilst that is settling down, we will start on the rest of the card, card base. Now I hand cut and score these myself, so make sure when you score it you have actually found the two edges together. Okay. Now you have this piece. And a side piece. You can choose either side, that's quite pretty too, but I will stick with that. Um, you want to cut out your poppy. You'll have two pieces of ribbon. One will sort of have a bow, but well, that's not really a bow, is it? Um, one will have a bow shape, and the other will be straight, so you know which is which. You'll also have a tiny, tiny little stamen. Now on that little stamen, I, can I suggest you use a little, I can't reach it, I'm too lazy to go over there, so I'm just gonna cut that. Um, a little dimensional, ooh, even smaller than that. And that's why I like little dimensionals so much. 
and tease up the stamens and he just sticks straight over look at that how easy was that put a couple of dimensions on the back so he's ready to go okay next you will want to next you will want to make sure he's dry and he is again double sided tape now it is slower doing it this way than gluing it so do what you like but I do find a better result as I said I'm back sorry I had issues okay so to finish off your card pop your little oh might help if you actually take the stickers off pop your little poppy on and get your bow through And this is card three. Okay. Um, tweak and tweak and play until you're happy with your bow. This is from the painted poppies stamp set and also the gorgeous painted poppies which is on the cover of the mini mini album let me find it should have been a bit more organized shouldn't i uh, peaceful poppies bundle page 27 and the peaceful poppies designer series paper which is what we've used on this page 25 and that's valid up until june this year okay so if you want to push pause now for end of card three and go and create your beautiful card please go ahead Hello lovelies, welcome to card number four. So this is quite an elegant card. Oh, I did case this one. I'll show you on the screen who it is because I can't remember her name right now. Um, and to make, I use the, the Poppies bundle. Oh, look at all my dies have all flipped over. But these are the dies that I used. It's a gorgeous set. I love the poppies. And oh. I also, for the sentiment, I used Happy Birthday from Here's a Card, which has got some really fun sayings on it. Okay. So we're going to go that way. Going to use the medallion style image, about half, and a little tape, I think, on this one because it's a big one.
large, a blue large stamen and a small blue stamen and three dimentes. Dimensionals. Now you can round, you can line them up perfectly, or you can just be crazy and have a different shape. Oh, it's like that. That's stuck. So that's good. <laughs> That'll do. Okay. And I actually put these together before gluing them on to the flower. Oh, it's Charlie. Hmm. Stuck him in the middle. And then popped him on. How easy was that, huh? Right. Now, just about four dimensionals. Just do a dry, sometimes it's easier to cut off the tails. And work out if you're happy with how it goes. Okay, welcome back to card number four. I think that's right. And um, we have got some embossing to do, this little beauty up here. And I thought I would show you very quickly uh, again how to emboss. If it's new to you, you need Versamark, white embossing powder, which we will open. Have ready to go, and I used here's a card stamp set with the happy birthday. So, first things first, embossing buddy. Even when you're feeling like you're in a rush, then you shouldn't be doing this to begin with. But if you if you skip this process, sometimes you do regret it. I have anyway. So we want to stamp up. Now this is just done on some scrap because it's going to be hand cut out and it won't won't matter. And the magic, I love that every time. It never ceases to make me smile. So we've got that ready to go. Okay, so we've got our card here. And we pop in our birthday greeting. And our three jewels. And voila. We have our elegant birthday card. 
Okay, if you want to push pause now and create your card, please go ahead. Okay, welcome back. Hello, card number five. So second to last card to go. And this one's a pretty ombre one. I've used Melon Mambo re which will be in your sample. It'll be a sample um, size for you in your kit. And I have stamped the butterflies from the Butterfly Gala and it comes joined together. So when you stamp it, it makes it easy to punch out with the punch because it punches them both out together. And the sentiment, a friend is someone who chooses you out of a whole world of people. I've used Beauty Abound stamp set and I've stamped in the basic grey. The paper you'll need is your card base, Melon Mambo five and a half by three and three quarters or 14 by 9.5 centimetres and then the top layer which we'll be working on with the embossing paste is just a few um, mils or what two sixteenths or one sixteenth of an inch smaller than your card base than your card layer okay so the first thing we need to do is pop our mask on tape it down and pop some of your ink on the side and so that's ready to go. Have your tool ready, your embossing paste. My class ladies you'll be using the shimmery shimmery paste but I'll be just using white because I've pretty much run out. Right so the top of the card you just have a little bit of white and then you can just smear your, you want to gradually add your color. So if it's too bright, you can um, lighten it with more paste. And then the further you go down, you can add some more richness until the very bottom is just the darkest color. Okay. And there you have your ombre effect. Now I've got some spare here. You can scoop it up and throw it away. You can put it in another pot. You can put it on your card or quickly make another card with it. It's up to you. I don't um, really have a need for this one this time, which seems a bit of a waste, but I'm going to do this, Ah, which kills me, but I am. Okay, so, but there are other things you can do, like I've just mentioned. And he needs a bit of a soak, I think. I'll put him in the wash. Wipe up your work area, which you've just used. Lid on the big reveal. So there we have a beautiful ombre finish. Okay, he goes straight into the wash with all his friends. And I'm going to just dry this off a little bit. Okay, so now we've got a dried brick wall. If yours is just air drying, then just set it aside and let it go. I've already got my double sided tape ready to go for the next step on him. Um, you'll need your Melamambo ink back and because we want to colour in our butterflies and you don't need much. Look, there's not much. There really isn't much there. Maybe a touch more. Maybe a little bit more. Okay. One thing I did forget to mention at the start, you'll need an aqua painter or, oh, not that one, a water brush of some kind. This is a Wink of Stella that's 
finished, it's empty. So what I did was remove the top, pulled the black thing out, it's a whole cylinder that comes out, filled it up with tap water and put it all back together, give it a shake and you'll now have shimmery water in your water brush. So that's another way to have uh, recycle your um, Stella. And this has just got normal water in it, in the normal water brush. So I'm going to use my Stella brush because it's a finer tip today. And I'm going to color on butterflies with, the, with that leftover ink. And you can squeeze out a little bit of water to dilute it. First of all, I'm just, now this is not waterproof paper. So you cannot spend too much time going over and over and over and more with, with the water brushes because it will, it will be saturated and start to peel. So what I'm first doing is coloring the whole image in. And of course you might be a bit more careful and a bit slower. You may or may not see the shimmery come out on this. It's just beautiful. Same with the little bub. He gets it all over. And you might just be happy with that finish. You might not want to do any more. Um, when it's dry, I will probably highlight a few more bits. So I might just quickly dry them off. Butterfly. Right, so now I'm going to pick up a bit of darker, darker ink and just highlight parts of the wings. Now, if you don't have the kit and you don't have reinkers. You can use the inside of your stamp. You can stamp this onto a stamp pad and that'll give you the same finish. So that's pretty wet. Um, and so on. So that's that's a fun little trick, little tip. Clean off your Stella brush or your water brush, aqua brush. And you then have two lovely butterflies ready. They can sit aside to dry. And make sure that your, your mat's nice and dry. Okay. And we will now attach okay now we've got the ribbon and we'll get some double sided tape or tear and tape whatever you like to call it I have pre-stamped and cut these out with a die and I'll just need to mount them up with some dimensionals. OK, 
Okay, so now I've just, um, I've already put my dimensionals on the back of my butterflies. You can tease the wings out, curl them up a little if you like, and place them on where you want. And add a little bit of bling. just glue the sentiment on the inside so that's card number five everybody and if you want to pause pause now and come back ready for the very last card from this tutorial hello welcome to card number six this is the last card we'll be making today. Like I said, forget the 20 on it. It's just a nice happy birthday masculine card with the ombre effect and the bricks. I used a good man stamp set, which is actually really quite lovely. And the happy birthday from the freebie ladybug when you spend uh, $500 or more on an order. You will need to get out your Pacific Point and Pool Party re-inkers for the actual card. It's the three layers, your card base, the same measurements as before for the matting and then the top layer is like earlier, just that little bit smaller. So we will, it's pretty much the same technique as the last card with the butterflies. This time we're using two inks instead of one. I guess that really is the only difference. And we will put our party on Pacific point and so the top this time as you can see I didn't really do a white I just did start off just knit on with the blue but if you want to do a streak of white you can um, I can show you what that would look like if I do it here for you and then I'm just going to add my pool party Darken that. I was going to use it all up. No point wasting. Now this one I went right to the edges. And then last not least, I just mixed it in with a bit. I mix the Pacific Point in with the pool party. And um, got darker and darker as we went down. This is so much fun. I hope you're enjoying yourself. I hope you have had a good time doing this tutorial I'd love your feedback and I'd love even more to see what you've made share it around 
post on Facebook. Let us see what you've done. Um, and um, now I've got way too much here. Can you see? Yes. So I'm going to try and do uh, the impossible. You know what I'm going to do, later, don't you? I'm going to try and put it back. It's dangerous, the thing. Don't do it, Shani. It's dangerous. I'm going to do it. There we go. We have saved some. Uh, the other option you can do is do another card. Which we could do. Why not? I could show you something really quick. Um, because there is quite a substantial amount of there. I don't want to throw away. Okay, this washi tape's now been totally contaminated. So he's going in the bin. There's the mask. There's the finish, the brick wall. I'm really happy with that. I'll clean up my work space. And we can quickly, quickly make it up. So I've just quickly put aside my, my brickwork and got my diamonds out, another piece of paper. And I'm just going to use up this embossing paste and do a random bit of fun there. There we go. Um, straight into the wash. So it does pay to have a few spare cut pieces and some clean masks if you come across that same situation as I have. And then you never know, you might do something really interesting <laughs> with, the, with the extra bit of embossing paste. Okay, so this is now dry, but if you're waiting for yours to dry, you can start working on other parts of your card elements. I'm going to um, color in my, my dude here, who's relaxing on the chair. I cut this shape out and the same color at the same size shape pardon me, using what did I use hang on I used I use Pacific point that's what that color is and I use painted labels dies this is what you get in it all sorts of wonderful shapes and this is the die I used to get that great rectangular that coordinates um, with coordinates with the painted the lab, painted label dies coordinates with the painted poppies. So that's a, that's a um, a suite. You can um, buy them separately if you want to, but I think you get a better deal if you buy them together and you get ten percent off as a bundle. And that's in the mini catalogue. So to colour in to colour in your man, you can put your ink on on here as we did before, or if you don't want to have the you want a quicker clean up, you can just even smear a little bit on one of your stamp bases. Now I did. You can do what coordination you want at the Pacific point of his top and the um, pool party for his pants. And again, I'm going to use Wink of Stella. Put my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. Um, start with your lighter colour first. It's always the wiser way to go. And really, it's just a water wash. You don't need much work on it. You don't need to do much with it. Clean it off with the tissue and a little trick for, for getting some nice tones 
is do the dark shadows first on your on your work and then as the as the ink sort of runs out on your brush you've actually then got a lighter color that just naturally comes through and you can work on those shadows make them a bit blend it a little bit more keep in mind that this is not waterproof paper okay so I'm going to stop there now you will notice that my man's got flesh colored pants on a uh, flesh colored skin I beg your pardon I haven't given you a color for that I apologize I'm using my ivory blend again if you've never used water-based blends you are missing out they're so easy to work with they're not like your normal texture they're more forgiving than that and if you stuck what colors to get this would be the first one I'd choose because there's no ink equivalent to this ivory and it's a very good one for pale pink that's the color we did piggy in on the last card uh, it's, a, it's a versatile one there's only one shade light and dark there's no light and dark with I with the ivy ivory I beg your pardon. okay so he's done how quick was that um, you can wipe off your stamp base and it's all tidy and put it away okay so I have pre-stamped my sentiments and I've also cut them out, I cut them out. With your top layer on your card, you can start assembling your card together. So to join these two, you can decide how far apart they go. You just put enough glue to match them up as such. You can offset them however you like. I have not, and now I'm going to, um, oh, that went crooked. Did you see that? Behave. Right. Um, everyone in, who got a kit will get a strip of this jute. It's braided burlap trim, and that's current. And I think it's great stuff. You get lots for your dollar for that one. That's too long, so I will cut. I will trim that down. If you want to have a more relaxed look, you can tease tease it out a little. Now, word of warning: glue and ribbon are not friends. Okay. Ribbon and double-sided tape. Ah, friends. So never use glue on your ribbon. It's just nightmare. It's a nightmare. Night, a nightmare waiting to happen. Okay, so I'm going to stick it at the top with my little teased ends because it's a bit of a relaxed sort of card. This beauty is going to get mounted up with the mini dimensionals. Now this piece, this burlap is 
now retired. On the original card I used two, two strips stuck together. But because I happened just to have this lying around in the cupboard, I thought I'm going to use it. And you can mount it onto your card, stick it onto your card with some double sided tape again. There you have it, my lovelies. Masculine birthday card. All done. Okay, so that was card number six. If you want to pause, you can because I've got some goodies to show you after this card, some extras. And um, once I once you've made this card, come back and see what else I've got to show you. I'm going to show you what I did with this card, with this, how I did this. Okay, bye. Welcome back. I hope you have had a great day creating all your cards and enjoyed yourself and are happy with your results. I'd love to hear from you how it went and some feedback. Being my first online class. Woohoo! Might even try Zoom class. That could be exciting, couldn't it? Okay, so this is a fun one. It's not in the class, it's not in the kit. I thought I would just show you quickly how I made it. You'll need gold embossing powder and the same old bits and pieces that we've been using anyway. So I'm not even gonna take this one. I'm gonna be daredevil and get this paste on. Again, I love it thick, some like it thin. It's a bit like Vegemite, I guess. Okay. Right, I can put that back in the pot. How's all your tools and your masks? You're getting it all nice and clean, keeping them nice. If you do, they'll last forever. Well, a very long time anyway. Okay. We will take that off. And we know that beautiful finish that we're getting so used to seeing and loving. Clean off your edges. Wipe down your mask. Uh, your Base, clean, you know, your craft mat. Dry them off. Now, it's pretty much like the glitter, but this time, if you've ever used embossing paste, you know it won't just sit there and dry and, and leave you alone. It won't, it'll fall off and rub off everywhere. So, what you actually need to do is once you coat your card base with it, your, your work with it. You can use any colour, experiment, and try what what ideas you come up with. So that's, it just looks velvety, it's just yummy, but it's not finished, you can't leave it like that, it'll all fall off and be a big mess. You do have to heat it up and let it set. Now, I don't normally like to bore you with how long this takes. It's not that long, but I want you to see how it changes colour. And once your heat, heat tool is, is warm, some people go all over the place crazy. I just go slowly in small sections so I know where I've been and I don't miss spots. And you can see it's all starting to melt and bubble and become quite deliciously chunky and yummy. You can see it's all so much fun. 
So this would work with copper, with silver, with any colour embossing paste, a powder you have. And there you have it. Voila. And the finished product with these, I have actually made quick little cards, so to speak. And I have one for well, everybody who has, I still have some more to make, but everyone who has um, bought my class as a whole kit, as a thank you to you all. And I appreciate your support. And um, I look forward to doing another class online. Not sure what the theme will be this time, but I'm really excited to have another go. And I hope you join me. Also, oh, there's another one. This is another card that I made with some of the experiments I did. That's with, um, oh, that's a different color. That's um, Seaside Spray on Crumb Cake. And, oh, and this one's, hmm, that is Coastal Cabana and Granny Apple Green. It's quite dramatic, isn't it? And this one, is a stencil that I made which you can make too there's no reason why not I made it from see whoopsies this die set which is called seasonal layers thinlets you get quite a lot in it and I use this this little maple leaf quite appropriate you pop it through you can do it on some paper you don't have to use acetate paper but I did it on acetate paper but you can you pop it through the, the cutting machine I cut three leaves and that's how I got did the same technique I've been doing with everything I used what colors did I use calypso coral and a little bit of soy saffron mixed it together and I used the, the, the sparkly <coughs> oh, excuse me the sparkly um, shimmery paste and got these sweet leaves so that's another thing you can try and if you do it with if you do cut with this um, acetate it is thinner than paper so you will need to use a shim like a little bit of cardboard to boost up the cutting process so it cuts properly clean it off like normal or if you want to use normal paper you'll probably want to get one use out of it so it's up to you but have some fun enjoy yourselves and I'd love to thank you all again for joining me in this class and have a great day in Okay, loves and hugs, Shani, and I'll hopefully hear from you again very soon. Okay, bye.